So welcome, everybody. Welcome this morning. Uh, I'd like to invite you to take your seats, and I think there's some drink and uh, some food back there if you get a chance. Um, my name is John Bischoff. I'm the director of the Institute for Engineering and Medicine. We're your hosts here today, and I'd like to welcome you to the 2021 INSPIRE Conference on Nervous System Diseases, Early Detection and Treatment. Um, it's really great to have you all here in person. Uh, last year during COVID, we did not have an in-person INSPIRE. And I also want to, uh, because of COVID, we've learned how to do things hybrid. So I also want to welcome everybody who's participating online. If you could go to the next slide. So part of what we're doing here today is uh, we're trying to share our stories with you uh, to kind of maybe get you to see yourselves pursuing a career in science and engineering and medicine, maybe down the line. And we all basically have our stories about how we got here and how I basically have the privilege to talk to you today as, as director of this institute and, and some of the great things that we're doing. And also really uh, all of these wonderful people that have volunteered their time to talk to you today in these uh, brief, roughly 10 minute talks that are gonna give you insights into their careers and some of the wonderful things that they're doing in this area, uh, an area of disease and application that basically touches all of us and uh, people we know in our families and in our communities. And so um, this is really what Inspire is about, is, is trying to inspire you. And, and hopefully we can, we can share our stories today and uh, we can hopefully take that uh, away and it, it uh, becomes part of your, what you're looking at uh, potentially for your careers and your stories in the future. Um, this slide, we're all gonna share slides like this and this is really uh, my story. So I, I grew up in California and my dad was an immigrant from Germany. He actually grew up during the Second World War, literally in the ruins of some of the Northern German, uh, Bremen was the Northern German city where he grew up. And he came to this country with nothing and through education, he was able to become a junior college professor and then uh, uh, basically raise two kids, myself being one of them. And I, uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do in high school. I tried a lot of different things. It was either gonna be, uh, you know, trying to be a professor on the high end or a ski bum on the low end, if you will, intellectually. I had a lot of different things going on, as I'm sure some of you can appreciate. I was a shop boy. I worked in an automotive shop. Uh, actually worked as a crane driver in a steel mill once. Um, so it wasn't clear that I was gonna go into academia. Uh, but I went ahead and um, uh, got into the University of California, Berkeley, and I, I stayed there and did all my degrees there. And then I did a postdoctoral fellowship at uh, Mass General uh, at Harvard in uh, Boston, and then eventually came here in 1993, and I've been here ever since. Um, I do have, as you can see, I, I do other things besides just work all the time, although <laughs> sometimes I get accused of working too much. But I like to you know, swim and hike, and I, I take uh, hikes with my wife pretty much every, every weekend, and I have two lovely daughters that are both students now. Uh, just a little older than all of you. And um, so my, uh, the problem that I work on is not exactly in the neural space, but I run a big center now that we try to preserve living biological systems because these are the drugs of tomorrow as well as the organs that people need and the tissues that people need for transplantation. So we work on biopreservation of living systems. So that's kind of the, an area of my expertise and, and work. And, uh, and I, I basically love my job and I love working with these wonderful people that you're gonna hear more from uh, today. And so each of the speakers will have a slide like this, so hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of yourselves and all of us, right? We were young once and we, we came here somehow and, and maybe today this is the beginning of, of your journey too. So uh, we have two wonderful leaders of the INSPIRE program. Uh, Rhonda Franklin and Chris Pinnell, and you'll hear from them shortly. I also want to call out uh, Ken Rosen. Ken, where are you? 
Uh, there he is in the back. Many of you may know Ken from First Robotics in the state of Minnesota. Uh, many of you are here today because of the personal touch and the phone calls and the emails of Ken Rosen. So let's give it up for Ken real quick. And our mission, as you can see, is to attract a diverse cadre of students to pursue science and engineering careers in medicine. Uh, and you'll hear more about this, but today is one touch point. There are many other touch points uh, that we want to introduce to you that will keep you interested and keep you engaged, hopefully, uh, through the year. Uh, so before we get started, I just want to emphasize that um, we're trying to be safe and indoors the policy unless you're speaking like I am or your speakers later, or if you're eating or drinking, please do keep your, your mask on, uh, and, and this will keep all of us uh, in our, our communities safe. So with that, uh, again, welcome. It's really uh, a delight and a pleasure to see so many of you here in person after almost uh, feels like two years or a long time since we've been able to be together. Uh, so it's really, uh, it's, a, it's a delight to see all of you. So welcome to the conference. What I'd like to do now is to uh, proceed with the program. And we have several other very important people that would like to welcome you. And we'll start with the deans. And so uh, in the next slide, you'll see uh, Dean Jacob Toller's uh, and then Dean Moscave's remarks. Uh, Jacob Toller is the dean of the medical school and one of my bosses. Gary? Welcome. I'm so glad that you are here and participating in the Institute of Engineering and Medicine INSPIRE conference. INSPIRE. It's a great word, isn't it? My name is Jacob Tolar and I am the Dean of Medical School here. I represent the medicine part of engineering in medicine. Today, you are here at the University of Minnesota, one of the greatest research universities in the United States, which is a fancy way of saying we help create the future. And you may well be a part of that. Please think about that because we need you. Each of you is absolutely unique in your experiences, your background, in who you are. And that is why you are here today, because we need people to come into medicine who don't think alike. We need fresh ideas. We need unexpected ways of looking at things. And I know this because I am the Dean of Medical School. We have four main things that we do. One, we teach. We train individuals to take care of people from before they are born until they die. We go from pediatricians to morticians. Second, we explore, we research everything to do with human health, not just as doctors, but as scientists. We look at cells, at genetics that make who you are and how the human body works. Three is we heal. We provide medical care to our communities. 70%, 70% of doctors in this state are trained at this university. And we have over 800 doctors who work in the medical school who actively treat patients. And I happen to be one of them. I'm a bone marrow transplant physician. And number four, we serve. We listen to communities across the state to learn what they need and how they can help us to leave the world a better place than when we found it. So today, you are going to hear from leaders in their fields about nervous system diseases, early detection, and treatment. These are the people that other doctors around the world listen to. And you are going to hear how critical the links between engineering and medicine are. Today, something you see or hear is going to catch your imagination. Wait for that moment. You are going to think, I would like to know more about that and capture that, hold this in the hollow of your hand and uh, pay attention when you feel that because that could be your interest, your passion, your way of changing your personal and professional life and the field of engineering and medicine in the process. I wish I could be there in person today, 
so that I could see all of you. Because if there is one thing that I like, it is seeing the future. And you are our future. And whatever you do, know that. Have a wonderful day. And we are glad to have you here. Fantastic. And now we'll hear from Mas Kave, who is the Dean of the College of Science and Engineering. Good morning, everyone. I'm Moss Kave, Dean of the College of Science and Engineering at the University of Minnesota. On behalf of our college, I welcome you to the INSPIRE conference of the Institute for Engineering and Medicine and a great day of discovery and learning. IEM is a joint program between the University of Minnesota's Medical School and the College of Science and Engineering. You will learn today how engineers and scientists, medical doctors and medical professionals work together to discover how we function and to come up with technologies to help the human health. After all, it was one of the College of Science and Engineering graduates, electrical engineer Earl Bakken, who worked together with University of Minnesota surgeon C. Walt Lillehei to invent the first transistorized pacemaker and create Medtronic. I hope that the fun you have today, learning about the functions and therapies of the brain will show you the power of mathematics, science and engineering to solve problems in human health but also other problems, such as energy and the environment, to, say, to name a couple. Have fun, be inspired, and I hope to see many of you in the College of Science and Engineering at the University of Minnesota. Have a great day. Fantastic, thanks, Gary. Um, and now I'd like to call our faculty leadership, uh, Rhonda and Chris. Uh, they are actually the Abbott professors. They're both endowed professors in innovative education. And so this is a very wonderful uh, opportunity for Abbott to actually uh, support this program in particular, uh, Inspire. Rhonda and Chris. Good morning. I'm so excited to see some of, so many of you and I met half of you and a few others, but I'd like to just give you a little bit of a, a, a recap, a, um, a summary about the program. The um, INSPIRE conference actually started in 2018, and it was so successful that it inspired the creation of the INSPIRE program, which made an opportunity for myself and my colleague Chris to become co-directors and eventually Abbott professors. So thank you. The program is organized to really fuse together your interest in science and the interest of engineers to solve problems related to the biomedical field. I am an electrical engineering professor here in the University of Minnesota, and I actually started doing research on communications. So I teach students how to build circuits that are responsible for the wireless communications that occurs in your phone between base stations on the top of buildings and routers in your home and to each other today. When I was sitting where you were, the communications were organized where I would pick up a phone that was connected to a headset and then talk to each other through a wire underneath the ground. And I never imagined that I would have an opportunity to use my interest in electrical engineering to also address my interest in human um, health and benefiting society that way. But over the years, because of my training in engineering and that interest, I now can use a lot of the techniques that we use in electrical engineering to build circuits to actually study uh, and develop diagnostics for 
health-related fields. Um, our director, John, talked a lot about backgrounds and how we came to be what we're, where we are today. I grew up in Houston, Texas, and I, when I was sitting where you are, I was a dancer and a trumpet player. And at that time, probably around my junior year, I thought that I was considering law and medicine and that I would go to school and maybe study in a topic that would allow me to go to law school. I was really kind of worried about whether or not I could do medicine and I couldn't quite resolve if I could handle death. So I said, okay, fine, I'll just do law. But I went to a camp that exposed me to engineering the summer before my senior year and decided to try engineering. And I've been doing engineering ever since. What has been most fascinating to me about my journey is that the decision to become an engineer and to keep reminding myself uh, to connect that interest with other things that were important to me has allowed me to do many, many things that I could not have imagined. Um, I love animals, so I've always had a dog. And in my spare time, I spend time with my daughter, who's college age now, and our dog, Carlos. And he's sort of our, our entertainment. But I've learned a lot about him as well, because he gets injured sometimes, and it's forced me to deal with health care uh, from the perspective of an animal. So I'd like to just encourage you to think about, take today to just think about one opportunity that might influence how you decide to pursue your interest in science uh, and mathematics most likely to either do something in the science field related to medicine or from the engineering side. And uh, you're gonna hear a lot about that today from the, our, our colleagues about the brain, but there are many other ways to participate in this. And I'd like to let my colleague, Chris, talk to you a little bit about how you can do that. Hi, I'm Chris Pinnell. Thanks very much for coming. This is uh, incredibly exciting to see you all. I am a uh, tumor immunologist, which means I study cancer, and I try to use the immune system to develop novel ways to treat cancer. One of the primary immunotherapeutics that's currently being used for leukemias has had an unintended side effect, which is neurotoxicity, something I never thought I'd be studying. And now, because I'm at the University of uh, Minnesota, I've got colleagues in neuroscience. Dr. Harry Orr is one. He's going to be speaking later. Uh, Maria Savantovic is another one. And so because of their help, I'm able to now explore new areas of research that I never envisioned doing. That's what's so cool about this job. You get the, you're never bored. It's always exciting. Uh, just briefly to, to tell you my story, I'm originally from New York. You may be able to tell from my accent, although I've tried to attenuate it. Um, Went to high school in New York, went to college in upstate New York, always loved biology and genetics. Didn't know if I wanted to go to um, medical school or to pursue a degree in research. I also played collegiate soccer. The day of the entrance exam for medical school, the MCATs conflicted with the soccer game. There was no way I was missing the soccer game for an exam, so I blew off that test. Uh, but I studied really hard to get into graduate school, so I thought that probably is telling me something, and that was a great decision for me. But that was the way I made my decision. I, kind of stupid when I was 20 years old, but I don't regret it, because what really drives me is trying to understand how things work. And that's what science really is. So um, can I have this slide up, please? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So science, scientists are discovering how things work. We identify a gap in knowledge in a particular field. Essentially, we're asking why. Why does that white blood cell kill that virally infected cell? How does that work? Engineers are mainly interested in problem solving, so their questions mainly focus on how. How can we take what um, Harry Orr has learned and, and, and use it to treat some sort of problem that society faces. So you can see that there's a, a very tight interface between the two. Fundamentally, there, there are some fundamental differences. Why does something work? How can we solve a problem? But they're intimately tied together. And so uh, this slide it looked better on my screen, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of compressed here. So in terms of trying to meet societal needs, scientists discover things. We find new things. Engineers 
try to find solutions to problems, taking that information that we've generated and information that they, they generate. And together, we try to fulfill societal needs. So if you go into any area along this continuum, you're going to be doing something good for society and for yourself. And you're going to get paid to do your hobby. I can't think of a better combination than that. So just briefly, this is uh, some of the latest data that we could collect about STEM fields. So if you're interested in becoming a professional in STEM, you want to know what sort of return you're going to get on your investment. I've already mentioned the intangible returns. You feel good about yourself. You're doing something positive for society. But tangibly, um, you're going to be making a good salary. So in the next decade, there's projected to be a 10% increase in the number of professions, jobs available in the STEM field. So it's a growing field. It's not contracting. And the median wage is about $90,000. That means that half of the salaries are below that, half of them are above it. So you're going to be making a good salary. So how do you get there? How do you go from where you are to where Dr. Bischoff is and Dr. Franklin is on the stage, right? So you're starting in high school, so you are here. Science and engineering are knowledge intensive fields. You need to have a base of knowledge before you can really do anything uh, productive. And so typically you would wanna get an undergraduate degree, a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science. Of course, there are people that are so bright that they can bypass this. But for mere mortals like me, this is the typical path to take. Those circles represent, I mean, I'm sorry, those curved arrows represent the fact that oftentimes a path from high school to an undergraduate degree is not a linear path. Some people take gap years. Some people do volunteer work. Some people go out and work before they go back to college. There is not one pathway from high school to college. You forge your own pathway. Then after you get your degree, you can do a number of different things. You can get a job, you can get an advanced degree, you can go into another field that's related to what you've gotten your degree in. So basically it's up to you. You've got tools now in your tool belt that you can use to forge your own career. And so what we're hoping to do today is to give you information in the morning about the nervous system particularly um, some of the diseases and how we can detect them. And then in the afternoon, the focus is going to be on this path, how you get from where you are to a professional in the field of um, science and engineering. So with that, I'm going to stop. And again, thank you for taking the time out of your day to come here. We're all incredibly excited to see you. We get excited about our work, so if you ask me what I'm doing, be prepared for a two-hour conversation. So um, talk to people. And, and everybody is here to see you succeed. Uh, so with that, I'm going to stop. And then I guess I'm turning it over to our Master of Ceremonies, Yoji Shimizu. Thanks, Chris and Rhonda. And uh, I just have to say that uh, Yoji is not only a colleague and uh, an eminent scientist in his own right, but he's one of the very few academics that I know that's also a celebrity. So he actually, uh, is the announcer for FIRST Robotics in the state of Minnesota and occasionally nationally, right, Yoji? And he's a musician. So with that, Yoji, please. Well, thank you, John. I'm gonna get my slides here for everybody. All right, good morning. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning. Nice. I want to welcome all of you to the 2021 Inspire Conference. Um, my name is Yoji Shimizu, and I'm, I'm really delighted and honored to be your Master of Ceremonies today. Um, I am a uh, professor here at the University of Minnesota Medical School. I'm also the director of the MD PhD dual degree training program. This is a program in which students complete both a medical degree and a PhD to become physician scientists and I'm also an associate dean in the graduate school. And as Dr. Bischoff mentioned, um, you're going to see these kinds of slides throughout the morning about every speaker's kind of personal story and background and so let me spend a few minutes to kind of tell you about my story. So I'm an immigrant. 
I moved here to the United States with my parents when I was two years old from Japan. And I went to high school in Towson, Maryland, which is a suburb of Baltimore. Um, my high school is probably most famous for being the high school that the Olympian swimmer Michael Phelps graduated from. So I'm the same from that same high school. Um, I have to say that uh, high school was not my, the favorite part of my life. I think it's fair to say that uh, high school was probably the worst four years that I've had in my life so far. And I certainly hope that's not the case for you, but for me, high school was really challenging, really difficult. Uh, I was not really mature enough, I think, to kind of handle high school. I was kind of moved through some, some accelerated classes and socially, it was a really, really difficult time. So my primary objective in high school was to kind of buckle down, do as well as I could in my classes, so I could get into a really good college and move far, far away from home. That was it. That was my only objective as a high school student. Um, so I did. Um, you know, I spent almost all of my time kind of doing homework and taking classes, and I was fortunate enough to get into Cornell University, which was maybe not as far from Baltimore as I thought I wanted to be, but it was far enough. It was about an eight-hour drive from home. And uh, I majored in biological sciences, but my big challenge in high school was I could not figure out what I wanted to do with my life, like moving forward. Uh, I came in as a pre-med. I thought for sure that I was going to go to medical school. And it really wasn't until the very last month or two of senior year of college that I changed direction. And um, in college, actually, I had a really great time, but I spent almost all of my time outside of class actually working at our college radio station. I was a news reporter. I was a disc jockey. Um, I did overnight shifts. I, did, I spent every waking hour outside of class working at that radio station. It actually helped me with my communication skills, but the more important thing is that I met my wife at that radio station. So uh, my girlfriend at the time, we've been together now for 42 years, but that was the major, major benefit of that particular extracurricular activity. Um, so research was something that I just kind of got involved in almost by accident through a coursework at Cornell and decided actually at the last minute instead of going to medical school, a little bit like Dr. Fennell said, I was going to go to graduate school and do research. And so I went um, even further away from home. I went out west to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. That's where I got my PhD in genetics. Then went back to the East Coast for a little while to uh, do my postdoctoral training. So there's some, some additional training that you need to complete after completing your PhD at the National Institutes of Health. And it was kind of nice being back home, but actually uh, we liked the Midwest a lot, and so we moved back. I was uh, recruited to the University of Michigan and then came here to the University of Minnesota in 1994. Um, so I also have a small research laboratory where I do some uh, work in immunology. Dr. Pinnell is one of, my, uh, one of my close colleagues, and we work on sort of similar questions about how can we use the immune system to uh, more effectively develop uh, uh, therapies that can uh, treat cancer. Uh, and in addition to my training program that I develop, I also work on some diversity, equity, and inclusion issues here as well. So much of my career right now is really focused on training and education and research um, in, uh, in, in academia. And as John mentioned, I, uh, my volunteer work is focused on first robotics competition as a volunteer uh, uh, master of ceremonies as well as a mentor. Uh, I play in a band. Uh, if you search around on Google long enough, you may be able to find some music videos that we put together, and, uh, and don't do that right now, and, um, and, I do some, and I love to read as well. So that's my story. I want to just again kind of welcome all of you here. It is like so nice to kind of see faces in person and kind of be together as a community and as a group. Um, and I would like actually now, before we kind of get going with the day, to kind of introduce all of you to each other, right? So we're going to be here for the day kind of as a learning community working together and learning together. And so I want to spend a few minutes just kind of introducing the various schools that are here with us today. And I'm going to mention all the schools, and I'm going to ask you to maybe either stand up or wave your hand or cheer or whatever um, to, kind of, to kind of acknowledge your, that you're here. So we're going to start with um, Crosby Ironton, Ironton High School. Where are they? <laughs> Roseville Area High School. Um, Al Humboldt High School. Yeah. All right, very good. Washington Technical Magnet School. 
You'll work on that. You'll work on that. Spring Lake Park High School. Hmong College Prep Academy. Minneapolis Roosevelt High School. Apple Valley High School. Woo. Egan High School. Where are you, Egan? Okay. I think. Higher Ground Academy. Yes. I know this group traveled a long way to be here with us today. Nevis High School. Thank you for being here. Hiawatha Academy. Johnson High School. De La Salle High School. Nice. Did I miss anybody? That's like the worst nightmare of mine, missing somebody. Okay, now I do want to mention the three schools that are here with us virtually today. So that's Northeast Range High School, Minneapolis Southwest High School, and Cass Lake Bina High School. So how about a right, huge round of applause for them as well. All right, so let's see how much time we got here. We are a community of, I would say, very smart, dedicated people, right? And yeah, you are. And as a result, um, you have an opportunity, you know, to kind of talk, discuss, and address, you know, some of the big questions of our time. So for before we begin with the official activities, I'm going to ask you at your table to discuss for a few minutes a really, really important question. One of life's most challenging and vexing questions. Okay, and I'm gonna ask you to spend a few minutes talking about it amongst yourselves, and then we're gonna take a little poll to see how people feel about this. Okay, you ready? Okay, this is the question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Okay, couple of minutes, talk at your table, yes or no, tell each other why or why not, and then we'll, we'll get back together.
All right, I'll give you one more minute, one more minute. All right, let's wrap up your discussion on this very important question. And uh, we, will, we will do a little poll here. Let's see how the best way that I can do this. All right, so I'm gonna ask everybody who believes that a hot dog is a sandwich to raise your hand. <laughs> okay, put your hand down. All right, if you are of the opinion that there is no way that a reasonable person would think a hot dog is a sandwich, raise your hand. Ah, interesting. <laughs> That's a pretty evenly split, pretty evenly split, I'd say. All right, now I wanna know if, if your initial answer to this question was changed by the discussion that you had at the table. Raise your hand. Okay, a few. All right, good. Okay. All right. So, this was really kind of an opportunity for you to kind of just talk with your group and uh, begin to kind of have discussions, right, and think about um, what the day ahead is for you. And Obviously, I encourage you to continue this discussion about the hot dog as a sandwich, but hopefully you have some more interesting kind of topics to talk about over the course of the day, right? All right, so I want, before we get you off to your breakout rooms for the morning sessions, I want you to rem remind yourself about what the word inspire means, right? So inspire, if you look it up in the dictionary, means to influence, move, or guide, to exert an animating, enlivening, or exalting ex influence or to spur on, right? So that's the reason why we've called this conference the Inspire Conference, because we hope that something that you experienced today, something you've learned about today, someone you've met today will influence you, will move you, will maybe guide you in a particular direction. And, and this year, the focus of the conference is gonna be on brain and uh, on the brain and our nervous system. And this is, uh, you know, even though I'm not a neuroscientist, um, this is a fascinating subject. Um, the astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson said, everything we do, every thought we've ever had is produced by the human brain. But exactly how it operates remains one of the biggest unsolved mysteries. And it seems the more we probe its secrets, the more surprises we find. So today, you are gonna learn about the ways in which scientists here at the University of Minnesota and at some of our biotech companies here in town are studying the brain and our nervous system. And we really need to understand how the brain works because the development of approaches for treating neurological disorders um, depend on that fundamental knowledge. And I'm sure you're all familiar with some of these neurological disorders that take a huge toll on our society. Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, psychiatric disorders, epilepsy, addiction, and substance abuse. So you will have a bunch of opportunities this morning and this afternoon to kind of hear some very short presentations from leading scientists in the field of neuroscience research about their work and about their careers. And so um, the way this is gonna work is that on your card, uh, on your table, there will be a card that will list the breakout room that you will be going to this, uh, today. And there's a map of the Alumni Center to kind of help you find your way to that breakout room. So you will be able to kind of stay in that breakout room for the course of the, uh, of the morning and then uh, hear from the presentations that will take place in that room. 
Um, I believe all the presentations will be recorded, if I'm correct. So if there's a topic that you wanted to see in one of the other breakout rooms, there'll be an opportunity for you to listen to those talks as well um, later on. And then uh, we'll come back together here in the main room around 11.30 for lunch and have our uh, lunch uh, speaker presentation as well. All right, so everybody got that figured out? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to have a good morning? Yes? Okay, good. All right, so the talks will begin at 9.40, at 9.40. So you can uh, make your way to the breakout room uh, by then. Thank you. <laughs>